Hey, I'm Richard Miller with Goldie May, and this is the live genealogy research series. Watch as James Tanner and I, along with invited guests, work through a genealogy problem with no script and no agenda. Maybe you'll learn from the big strategy, maybe you'll learn from the small features and the tools, or maybe you'll just see a better way to do it and you can leave a comment so we can all learn. I hope you find this really helpful. Now here is the research. Okay, welcome to episode eight. I'm here with my distinguished co-host James to present him a case that he hasn't seen before. Uh, James, this time I thought I would, instead of doing something kind of end of line like we've done before, this is one where, well, maybe it's an end of line, but this is a case where Eugene Hoselton, an ancestor, uh, just sort of disappears from the record. So he is married twice, has a few children, and then we just don't have any sources putting him anywhere after a certain point in time. So I'll show you the subway map. Born in New York, 1846. And then the last point we have for him is the birth of a child, 1875. And he's 29. And then soon afterwards, so that's uh, what year do we say that was? 1875. Soon afterwards, his wife gets remarried in 1883. So I don't know if he died. I don't know if he just left town. But the challenge here is, you know, did he get remarried to someone else? Are there other children out there that we want to connect to him? Or did he just, you know, did he just pass away or whatever? So that's that's the challenge. And let's jump in and see what we can do. Hey, that looks good. There's one kind of an observation. I've had this happen in a number of different places. One time, of course, they ended up in prison. One time they abandoned their family and showed up later married to somebody else. Hmm. The, the issue, the time frame here is a little bit late for simply walking away and never getting a divorce because that's something that, that could happen back in those days, especially because divorce cost money and there was no real way to check to see if someone had married previously. So if they showed up and they never mentioned that they were ever married and or a lot of other possibilities happen. And also if they do, they may sometimes they change their name, which then really does make the person disappear. And since if he, if he never, or she never contacts the family again, and they don't know anything about it, then we basically have no, the only other way that would be solving this problem ultimately, and we'll look at the details, right? in just a second, but the only other way would be with a DNA test and checking to see if some kind of ancestor with a surname that doesn't seem to be connected to anybody uh, shows okay. up. Okay. So if you have sort of a wild card out there, it's possible that the wild card is the descendants of this guy. Uh, okay. Well, since you mentioned it, I do think we have some evidence and I can't remember how good the sources are in this, that he changed his name. So I can't remember if this is a memory section or actually in the sources, but we do have some okay. well, let's, evidence. That yeah, let's change. start by looking at, at the children and okay. the places where we're, where we're looking at. So we have, see what kind of consistency we have. Okay. Um, so we have, yeah, 1870 is the first child in Iowa. And it looks like these four points here are the children. So we're saying... Adams County, Montgomery County, Marshall County, Wapello County. It's all different counties of Iowa. So maybe right, I mean, right off the bat, I don't know how close those Iowa, those Iowa counties are to each other, but we could just go ahead and check that. And I'll just kind of X out the rest of the points. Five counties of Iowa next to each other. It's kind of a lot of moving around. Yeah. Hmm. So Davis and Wapello are quite close. Montgomery and Adams are quite co close. And okay, Marshall's now, the outlier there. There's a couple of things that I that come up sort of initially here might help to separate out some of this information. Maybe, maybe not. One of the things that they have in Iowa are old tax maps. Okay. And you can go back and, and see the maps of all the farm owners hmm. in, a, in a given county. And so if you do a search online for Iowa maps, county maps, put in county and, and put either farms. Yeah, that, that does it. See, now you've got, uh, go down, um, 
put old, yeah, need, need historic. Yeah, see, here we go. Okay. These are from the early the late 19th and early 20th centuries, which is the time frame that we're working here with. And these are the county atlases. Good, and okay. So you can so, find the, the county that you're looking for. So I don't know if we want to choose the, uh, the last one. Of yeah, all try that, Davis, Davis County. Yeah, there's 1912 atlas. See the standard atlas over there on the screen? There's 1931, there's an 18... Mm, 1891 yeah 1891 you might want to take the 1891 it's kind of starting in the middle it'll give you an idea of what we're looking at here so 1891 get into some these are you know this is like well you haven't looked on family search and you haven't looked on ancestry and my answer is yeah but let's see if you owned a farm <laughs> before we get too excited about the whole thing yeah so decent yeah decently uh unique last name a little bit where he lives and we might need to bring up the Google maps just to give us some perspective of where, where these places are. Okay. So close. Davis County kind of North or sorry, Southeast corner of Iowa. Yeah. If you can zoom in as far as you can, you might find a town in a Bloomfield. Okay. You're right outside a little town called Bloomfield. Okay. Okay. So that's supposedly where they're from. Unless it's just taken the middle of the county. I'll just try opening the book. Is there a way to... Just... You know, and I'm just... Yeah, funny enough, I'm just seeing this cover. I don't see any pagination options. Let's see. Arrows on my keyboard don't do anything. Let me just go back to this other... Oh, it just says cover. Okay, maybe that's it. Plat Book of Iowa, 1891. Introductory pages, supplementary pages. Maybe it's this Yeah. village maps. Okay. There you go. All right, there we go. Bloomfield. Okay, so now we find where Bloomfield is. It might be the town. So go south of there where it was where the maps were. And sometimes they have a separate list of the names of the people, but a lot of times they're just on the property for the farm. Supplementary pay. That looks like an index there. Yeah. And we're looking at Hoselton. Nothing through there. H O. S or no. Z, Hazleton sometimes. Mm -mm. Okay. So let's try a different town. So do I check another county? I mean, this and it's a little late, I suppose, for for Hazleton. I mean, if we think he's his wife's remarried by 1883. Well, that says Lads Lasdale, the last one you clicked on. Ladsdale. Uh Ladsdale, that's right. That's where the last child was born. Okay. okay, so yeah, so, let's try a different county for a different year or earlier year. Oh, yeah, we could go earlier year. Okay, so if these are... You should be able to just search again. by county up above. Okay, let me go Wapello then, Wapello County. Try maps with that. Hmm. 1930, 1893. Yeah, try. Well, when what's the date we've got? It's in that. It's, we're a little late here, right? We're, I mean, oh, we need to be earlier. If I look at, I mean, who stayed? And we got an 1895 residence of one of the sons in Wapello County. Yeah, let's so try can, that. Can, uh, okay, I'm just looking for an index here, seeing if one of these looks like. An index, but I don't see one. Just zoom in on thumbnails. The okay. Polk. See now the problem see. is without an index. Even if you have the, if you don't have an index to that particular yeah. volume, then you just have to zoom in and and start looking for. But if you know that that the name of the town, then it's it's easier to find. Okay, and then and they sometimes have all the listings in the different townships on the like this one does on the border. So let's let's kind of move on from this because okay, this could take back up from this. take your take an hour or two for you to <laughs> to dig through. But the the important thing about this is it gives you two or three things. First of all, it shows you exactly on the map where this farm was and the boundaries of the farm, and it also shows you the time frame 
Um, then there's, there's these other kind of records that you can go to because most of these farmers back in those days belonged to a co-op. Hmm. And if you know exactly where the farm is and you can start working on finding at the co-op, so there may be a Lansdale or whatever the name of the place was, uh, co-op, and the co-op records are available. So you may have a co-op record that shows that the guy disappeared or died. And so they would just mention that in the co-op records that our, yeah. our, our friend here. Yeah. The last so then the, the next, yeah. the next thing I would check is going to look at his record and let's look and see what, what it says okay. up in the top, up at the details. Okay. See, we don't have a death date and he says he was born in New York, but everything is of course in Iowa. So we won't, so we're looking to see whether he died. Mm-hmm. Well, he did die. I mean, if he was born in 1846. That part's true, yeah. That's the second rule of genealogy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Regardless of whether you have a record or not, you know That's the guy's right. dead. That's right. So now if we go down, when was the last child born? That would be 75. Yeah. So let's go up to, uh, and this is, and where was that? Give that that was the uh, Davis County, Iowa, I believe. I, is that Davis County? Let's see if I've got that right. Yeah, that's the Lansdale one. Okay, then let's Sorry. go to Davis County, the, the uh, catalog. Okay, and I'm going to just go ahead and do it here. Okay. Okay. And then we want, want to look go for to um, place. For... Okay, probate. Okay, so if we're looking in the 75 period, looks like lots of these would potentially match. So index. Yeah, let's have, here's a probate index from 44 to 39, and then another right. one. 24. Okay, yeah. Right. Index to probate record. Is that maybe our yep. best that's, one? That's where we're gonna see what we've got. Okay. And, and it's uh, got like a thousand pages, so. We need, we're going to look, make sure we're on the right date. Keep the year date in mind. So we know All right. So we're thinking 75 ish was the last child. And yeah, let's, let's just kind of assume that's the, of, that's 75, 74 is the latest date that, that it would have been there. Okay. And it looks like these are indexed by last name, maybe. Mm-hmm. So okay. if you just, yeah, you can close it down and jump. The simplest way to do that is see the, the little, uh, thumbnail mm-hmm. yeah and then just kind of jump down the line like go straight down three or four rows and then see where you are and then just keep, or then look at the next you've got another set of okay. records Let's and i think that sure. i think our previous page said it was in the first oh okay what do they call it the first slice of this film the first item first item is that d's you're seeing davis yeah there's a davis yeah that's there's Enoch Davis, but that's yeah. you're you're looking for yeah, for H's. G, there's G. G Hopkins, and there we go. They may be in order because they may have created this after the fact, but I wouldn't. Or you're it. saying, or the H's may not be in order. They may just be. Yeah, they may be a chronological and or and not known. Okay. Not so, yeah, I'm seeing some hills and hails, Hamiltons. Okay. And yeah, I think this is the beginning of the H's. So, and they're not in order within the H's. So, Hackett and Humphreys. H U. No, U does not yeah. fall away. Yeah. So, and uh, what? And then it's just. So, I guess we just browse at this point, right? Mm-hmm. That's all yeah. you can do. So, this is the reality of genealogy research. Even if we end up cutting out a lot of this later from our video. Yeah. Okay. Hills. I don't see a house in there. Oh, we can. We can speed through it. Hmm. I like that idea. Okay, so this is what we're getting from this, and what would happen is that we are we're looking for negative information. In other words, if he doesn't show up here, Great we point. know he wasn't he didn't die in this time period in that state with a farm. Okay, because otherwise he would have been it would have been probated. No, there's there's no way you can transfer. No way to avoid that. Okay, okay, yeah. yeah. Even if the wife was the heir, they still had to probate. There wasn't any way around it. Okay. And a lot of H's. 
Yeah, sure there are. Probate records are among those uh, that are the least likely to get pro, uh, indexed. So mm-hmm. what's going to happen is, because uh, one probate record could have two or 300 names or more because of the fact that the, um, when they when they appraise the probate estate, then they have an appraisal and a sale. So they sell off anything that people don't want. Uh, the heirs don't have to, actually the heirs have to come in and buy with anybody else. And so the problem is that, um, especially if there are debts, because then the debts have to be paid off from the probate sale. Oh, okay. Then you get all these coupons for all the little items they had, right? Like candlestick yeah, get, and a chair. Yeah, and you get, yeah, you get a whole long list, but but then you can have hundreds of items and hundreds of names of the people who bought those items. Wow. I think you're running out of names. I think H's. I'm out of H's, huh? Yeah. Yeah, I think you just ended the H's. Okay. So I guess to summarize this is this is negative information. At yeah. that point in time, now we have whatever the time frame of this particular record, unfortunately, when you have to go to the bottom where it says image index and if you, could, if you drop down on yeah, the little tabs, there you go. This is 1844 to 39. That was probably the index we were looking at. And then there's another index from 1844 to, oh, those were minutes in the second item. Hmm. So there's a negative here. That means that that, for at least this county, this process you'd have to go through for any suspected place where the person was. But since there's no probate record, that's an arguable that he didn't die in that county at that time. Okay. And that and makes James, it I've, so you need to go further. I think I've heard you say that for as many records as FamilySearch has indexed, they have twice as many unindexed. Is that about right? Oh, yeah. And so and, or, um, a lot more or than more. twice. Yeah, okay. so you can also go up to images. Which county are we in? Are we in, we're in Davis at? County? Yeah. So I and what I'll do is I'll put. Um, yeah, let me. That's. I'll leave that there. Okay, so we could go to images. You're saying. Yeah. In, uh, um, Search images. It was. Yeah. So it was. Before I go there, can I check just down here if we finished okay. looking at? You know, was there anything else to that we need to any of these other indexes that we need to look at? So if I. Yeah, I mean, there, we'd have to. Probate, is that... yeah, we'd have to keep going through indexes. Okay. In fact, you want to do a search through any of the probate records that are from the place and the time. Okay. Because the way the probate records are not necessarily, as you probably see from the fact that the that the index or whatever the list of names was not in any kind of an alphabetical order. Mm-hmm. Well, so probate files. See, probate is a, isn't a one-time action. It's like not like birth or death. Probate is something that takes over a period of time. So yeah. when you have a probate, one that I just used as an example in some of my webinars and stuff was uh, from Provo here in Utah, and that lasted over 35 years before it closed. And so uh-huh. there were records spread over a 35-year period of time from like 1870 into the early 1900s. And so, you know, you go, well, I didn't find it in 1895, so he must not have died in that day. The answer is, no, he might have died in 1895. It may not have been probated until a year or two later. And then it may not have ever been probated again. I mean, never been closed until the farm was sold, and it may never have sold until 10 years later. And then maybe the wife had a a dower uh, claim, and so it might have come back into court 10, another 10 years later. And so you just probate is in the matter of elimination, starting with the earliest possible death date until the last possible mm-hmm. action that could have occurred. Until you see a final, there's final documents in a probate say that close the probate, discharge the, the executor and terminate the bond. And all of that happens, it can still be reopened. Wow. Okay. So, so are these indexes we're seeing just the idea that the county may have gone back and created new paper indexes for the records, and so you get multiple well, indexes? Well, basically, what happens is when the the pleading paper comes in, they put it on a calendar for hearing, and so you have 
you have records of the hearings, you have records of the documents, and they keep, and generally speaking, the actual documents are not in these books. The books are copies of the documents. Okay. These big, they're, they're big probate books. I mean, big. They weigh like 30 pounds a piece. Wow. They're massive. And so they, when they put this in, and then they have a probate index book that they have. So they log it into the probate index book, and then they go over and copy the entire document into the probate record. Okay. And, and then if you're lucky, they also filed the original documents. So you've got three possibilities of where this stuff could end up and, and how it's kept. Okay. But okay. So, so searching, this is the this is the reason why searching probate records are not usually on anybody's radar, and mm-hmm. very few people actually go through and do this. Does Ancestry index more probate records than Family Search does? Yeah, yeah. You'll find okay. uh, if if you were looking here and you went over to Ancestry and they happen to have them. The problem I found with Ancestry is that they're not really strong in having uh, individual county records. I see. Okay. But you might, you know, that's okay. another thing you could do. It's just do a quick ancestry search to see if there's a probate file. Let me see that real quick. Yeah. And that could short circuit the whole problem because it immediately come up. Now, when you look at the list of sources that have been listed, you can tell rather quickly whether someone has even thought about that. What do you mean by that? Well, because if what's missing is a death record and there's no and there's nothing, no indication that there was any other kind of search made, then you have to assume that nobody ever looked at the probate records. Okay. Yeah. And if you look over on the left hand side, you'll see types of records, birth records, death. And when you click that, then you'll then you'll see death, the burial, and cemetery. Click on that. And then that'll tell you the records that it found. And if you see if there's any probate or any kind of records in there. Yeah, nothing for Iowa as I look at it. more. Yeah. Another way to look at it is to go to the catalog here on Ancestry. So you go up to search, go to the catalog, and then put in Iowa. Drill down. Go to USA, Iowa, click down. And then you'll have oh, it'd be um, near Davis County. Yeah, you can go to Davis. Incidentally, County. I don't see Davis County. Yeah, um, um, that's that's yeah, that's that's our answer. That's the, there's the well, other Pella county. is there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So All you right. can see that's a, that's that illustrates the point I just made earlier that ancestry is not they're really strong in county records. Okay, that's helpful to know. And and family search is really strong in cam in, in county records. They've got a lot of film of counties they've worked with. Yeah. Okay. So that was one thing they, they emphasized was getting all the birth, marriage, death, and probate records. Okay. So we, we were going to look at um, images. And so is that worth doing still? We could. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You never know. If, they may have uh, sent somebody else in there and did a whole other thing. And this means that they, this means that they just, this is hotter off the press, I guess. Well, yeah, these are the records right, that are, were that were um, that are being that have been digitized, but I have never been cataloged and never been indexed, and they're all just put in this giant pile. Okay. So, see, there's there's probate bonds and complete probate records from 1911. Okay. And you're going a little straight down. late, and then yeah, bonds, executor records, executor's records. So I don't know, I could open a couple of these. We've got quite a few. Yeah, there's um, 378 if you want to keep clicking. <laughs> yeah, so we're going to have a lot there. And then these ones, you just got to browse. I mean, you look for the page, same, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. And here, here's yeah, a key that, that I had the discussion on. Uh, this week in the in the BYU Family History Library, somebody was looking in these records, and I said, "Well, they said, well, I'm not seeing the records." And I and they said, "Wait a minute, I'm this says this was day whatever county, and it the first record that comes up is not that county." And I said, "Well, don't be surprised <laughs> because they're not very well kept, they're not very well organized, 
And you really just have to keep looking and looking because I have found it's, let's say, marriage records. You open it up and it's all birth records. Uh, uh, you'll okay. look and you'll say from this county or from this city and it'll be open it up and it'll be all five different cities. So it's just. So that's the whole point of images is that they're not organized yet and you've got to just. Yeah. And even when they that. do get into the catalog, you're going to find there's a lot of catalog entries that are are not quite accurate. Okay. So okay. when you start looking, it's a good idea to look at each image, each set. So for instance, let's say it says from 1870 to 1890 marriage records. And so you go th- look at the whole thing, look down at each set of records on there to see exactly which set of records is on that one microfilm or on that digital record set. And when yeah. I say microfilm, they've all been digitized but some of the digital images come from microfilm and some of the digital images are original digital images. Ah, Okay. Yeah. Okay. So that's important. All that to understand what you're looking at when you're doing research. Yeah. And so this is, so we've got our work cut out for us to go through these. Yeah. This is just a, this is a major kind of project. The incentive of course, is that if it's an old problem and you've never had any resolution of it, that there's uh, what I would do, and what I've done is to is to go through the catalog, go through the images, and go through. And we didn't have images before, so that's new, new kind of thing. Hmm. But go through the catalog, and go through the the lists of everything of all the different kinds of records. Pull up, a, make a, a physical list. You can do that quickly here by just clicking on each one in Goldie May. But then you have your 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 what you might call research possible future log in other words yeah. you've, you've collected that then you can just mark them off as you search through them yeah i like that and i mean that, one way i've done that before go ahead yeah go ahead i was going to say one of one way i've done that before is using the task list and and you know it's it's um yeah. you could type it of course but you, there, you've also got this option with um to create a task from the link so you could just right click these and just uh you're seeing those pop in here with the link Mm -hmm. so that's i've done that before at least to keep a you know keep the number of records here is going to be a little bit daunting astronomical yeah so but this is the this is you know it it sounds like and and people just when they do this i always see people go uh, you know uh they when they start realizing how much work is involved in finding some of these really elusive records and so, so it sounds um, like you're saying that's that's the idea that you know if there were low hanging fruit we would have found it already and so yeah this is so we're, we're working off into records that are totally uh, like the tag but we started out with those maps and you can see that working through that would be a pro- process of actually mm-hmm. looking at the maps as long as you know they live so far and they near this t- near a town it's easy because you pull it up you go to the map and then you just start looking in a circle to see if they had a farm around there yeah. and this way it's, it's amazing if you find it it's like gold because you you not only have the farm you have the whole boundary and everything you know exactly where it is you could get in the car and drive to it and so that's that's the you know that's what's important and you may want to do that because you can go talk to the neighbors and yeah some of the old guys may say oh yeah i remember he he ran away off off his wife you know kind of thing yeah so, okay Interesting. It's, there's, there's, like I always say, there's never an end to records. You can always find some way to get more information out of stuff. It's, it's time limiting, meaning you die before you ever get through. <laughs> right. So, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's not, you know, we're never, we're never going to get through. Okay. Here's the next set of records is we want to look for local records from newspapers because if he okay. left, yeah. if he left town and abandoned his wife, there's a good chance Could be in a newspaper. local paper it got in the paper. Okay. So and so has disappeared, never returned. We don't know what happened to it. So BYU Library is a great place for that because you can access all the paid newspaper sites. Yeah, there. yeah. You can you can go to one of the family history centers. Some of them have access. The family history libraries uh, may have a little more access. Uh, the ones that are around. There's a difference between a family history center and a family history library. The libraries are 
established libraries in addition to being family history center. BYU Library is not either a family history library or a family history center. It is the BYU Library. Okay. So it's not in that list, but it's still a major uh, place to get information. Could, and good I guess your local serve. library too could have some newspaper sites as well. Yeah. yeah. Now, do you have a, do you have a subscription to my heritage? Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, if you look on my heritage has millions and millions of pages of newspapers. So go to research that tab up there and come down to the collection catalog, which is up at the top oh, the catalog. Yep. And you'll see there's 17 billion pages. Mm. Uh, yep. Well, that's all their records. Go to the go down to newspapers. Uh, newspapers. Okay, yeah, yeah, there's so a one, billion one, pages billion. of newspapers, yeah. and they're from all over. So you go to USA, yeah. then Let's there's see. time frames, and you where it says USA, there's a refine further. Oh, thank you. Yeah, and then there's a list of of, of states which is a just the two, there. I think, right. It's not letting me scroll inside there. Oh, okay. Well, I just, uh, if I take out the it. years, then. Okay, not yeah, you have there. to, you have to go in where the years are. Okay. So there's some, but there's chronicling thing. America is much more. See that the big one, the first one that was there, that was go back to the original. See where it says chronicling America. That's the Library of Congress's one. And mm-hmm. you just do a name search. That's an, there's an E up at the first one, E. Holsonton. Nebraska, mm-hmm. maybe. Okay, may or may not be him. I would probably. Well, here's another Iowa issue. See, first, I suppose. See, if, he didn't, if he didn't change his name and just never corresponded and people didn't know that. I had a, an un- a great uncle who um, just disappeared. He, was, uh, he had been divorced and then came and was living with his parents for a while and then just disappeared. And nobody in the family knew where he was. No, there was nothing we could find or, or identify with. And after a number of years, we found him in the Social Security Death Index. And then oh. we found him in, uh, and he moved to... He, his last place of living was California, and the place he showed up was in St. Louis, Missouri. Okay. But quite basically yeah. spreading a wider net and getting into records that cover larger areas eventually. And the newspapers are good for that because if you find the person's actual name in there, so how many Eugene Holstons are there? And this guy may be moved and started a new business and just. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, good. Is that a great place for us to just wrap up for today? Yeah, I think we've uh, covered a lot of ground. Um, I think so. I don't know that, you know, this isn't the kind of of, uh, project that's going to resolve in in an hour or two hours or five hours or whatever it's going to be. It's an ongoing kind of thing where you want to put it into, well, this month I'm going to look at (laughs) and maybe look at a few records at a time. But yeah. uh, but this is this is the only way you're going to get through these kinds of of, um, of situations is just use all these different kinds of records more than I could possibly go through in a matter of an hour or two. Yeah, it sounds I like mean, in a just, tough case. Just, not just go through and search, but more than I could even talk about in an yeah. hour or two. Yeah, it sounds like in these tough cases that I mean it's it's ten times or one hundred times the hours. Mm-hmm. versus the, the the easy cases i mean just right you can okay. spend a lot of well, time here looks like you've uh, got a good place and a lot of work to do if you wanted to do that yeah yeah all right well thank you james we'll see you okay. next time okay thanks bye bye